taking a second because that drive's spinning up. All right. I was lied to. I was always told SSDs are always live, but they do go. You can put them to sleep. I've noticed. Hmm. So sometimes they'll have to spin There's up. There's nothing that spins though. What has to sleep? It's I just, don't. I don't know. I, I assume maybe the power. Memory. Maybe it's just power shuts off on it, and oh, then maybe when yeah. you go to access it, it goes. Oh, you want us? Hold on one second, and then that's interesting. I guess. I mean, all I know is when I use it all the time, no delay. But if I haven't used it in a day, and then I go hit record on that external yeah. drive, it takes. It it takes a second to kind of quote unquote spin up. Yeah, huh. it's weird. It's weird. Pow- Bombad says it's just power saving. I could probably turn that off, but I don't know if that's good. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. Yeah, you uh, yeah I'm not going to worry <laughs> about it. Uh, here we go. Let's do the show. It begins in three... On, okay, there we go. Three, two, one. We've selected people that didn't know any of these dances. They're watching us now. They'll join us later. And guess what? You're invited, too. Let's do the latest dance craze, the Macarena. What I have here is a Mexican centavo. <laughs> The morning stream. This little piggy's going to market. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to TMS. It's the morning stream for Wednesday, August 7th, 2024. I'm Scott Johnson with Brian Ibbett. Hi, Brian. Hello. Happy middle of the week to you. Yeah. Let's hump this Wednesday, you know? <laughs> Let's get that going. Uh, yeah, sure, we're, sure. We're back, everybody. We we uh, we told you yesterday we would be, and now we have commit, We have uh, fulfilled our promise to be here. <laughs> we keep our promises. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, it's good to be here. Somebody in the chat, sorry, I'm going to go back to this for a sec, because just prior to the show, yeah. we were talking about SSDs and how they work, and somebody in yeah. there just yeah. said that they're not good for cold storage, meaning... Just putting data in a drive and then putting it somewhere as a backup and not, you know, actively using oh, it. Oh, really? Yeah, and I'm curious oh, about that. that. Yeah, why? Why is that? Whoever said that? I can't find the name. Who said it? Ah, somebody said is it. Because is it because um, memory takes power to store? Like once you, once it loses all power, it loses since it's not writing anything physically to that. Yeah, maybe it just that, takes a long time to. Or sorry, it's a, like a slow degradation because of the. No yeah, power or something like that? Yeah, I'm I, curious about that. Do you see this Intel lawsuit? Do you have an Intel 13 or 14th generation chip, Brian? Do you have one of I those? must not. I don't okay. think I do. All right. I don't know. How, how would I know? I don't I don't actually know either. <laughs> if you know that you have those, <laughs> apparently they, they're getting uh, uh, sued because um, they were aware of a problem where these chips slowly degrade over time Ooh. and that people wouldn't even really notice it for a while because it takes so long to do but then eventually it will happen uh and that it doesn't matter if you have one or you don't or if you have one it will happen is the thing is the thing so there's like this big demand for replace the chips they're gonna lose a bunch of money it's gonna be it's gonna be bad people saying they have one but they don't have any issues i'm telling you go read up on it that's the point of it is it's sneaky you don't think you've got issues until until you do because those yeah. those generations of chips have got the problem. All right, so the answer came through. SSDs are flash storage, so they uh, if they short or something goes wrong, everything is lost. Spinning mm-hmm. disks physically store the data on the plate. Mm-hmm. Okay, well that makes yeah. sense, I guess. I don't know. I guess we're you know whatever. Everything's everything's uh, right. it's all Ones temporary. And zero is actually on the plate on magnetic media versus just being in a um, in a stasis. But I would think that I would think that if power you know they've got to have some sort of little battery or something mm-hmm. that that keeps the SSD quote unquote live. <laughs> the Wraith says SSD controllers will refresh the cells periodically if they're powered. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Okay. The cells. Interesting. We call them cells. Data cells. Is that what we're calling those? Cool. That's fancy. Yeah, I like that. Well, anyway, uh, so cells. we've we learned a little something this morning. Um, I wanted to mention something that I think is awesome, and I meant to bring the bottle. I forgot. Crap. Anyway, Mike Pacholik, a friend of the program, once in a while will send stuff in based on things we say, you know? Mm-hmm. And he sent this Hornet killer stuff because I've been talking oh. a lot about Hornets. And it's mm-hmm. in a bottle that's all, it's a powder with a little spout on it. Almost looks like a big fat Elmer's glue bottle, almost. Yeah. Okay. But it's full of powder. It's made by Bear. The aspirin people. Bayer, okay. Yeah, Bayer. Bayer. Yeah, yeah, you take one of those a day, it keeps the heart attack away or whatever they used to say. That's right, yeah. Um, 
And so I thought that was a little weird. I guess they compound powders, so why not? That's fine for a big yeah. company to do. Anyway. I guess it does seem like an odd pivot for them. but <laughs> It does. It, it makes me want to, I want to make sure those buildings are separate, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me not ingest the uh, an aspirin made from Hornet Killer. Thank yeah. You. This orange flavored child's aspirin tastes funny. Hmm. What's going on there? Well, anyway, and it doesn't, but it, this, the other thing is it only has warnings for keep out of children or keep away from children, children <laughs> and nothing uh, about it being poison or calling poison control. So it may not actually hurt no, adults. may not be harmful. Yeah. yeah. Um, they don't even say keep away from pets, although we did our best to do that anyway. So anyway, whatever oh, yeah. this stuff is called, it's a powder. It's white. It looks like cocaine or something. And uh, we, we found a new hornet's nest growing inside of some rocks. On, okay. on the ground. So, like, not up high yeah. somewhere, but, like, in yeah. the dirt, which is worse somehow. I don't know why. Just worse. <laughs> yeah, that's um, interesting. Because, well, because with your, uh, if it's up high, you can see them approach. Yeah. But if you're walking, you can't see them with your feet. I think that's walking it. walking around. Yeah. I think that's what freaks me out. I hate that. So, anyway, we decided to, to sprinkle this all around those rocks just to see. I yeah, thought, yeah. I've, I've, pardon me, I'll admit it, Mike. I was like. I don't know, man. It's freaking powder, really. <laughs> I don't know. I just yeah. didn't buy. I just didn't buy it um, at first. But anyway, we laid all this stuff out. These things, a meat. We didn't put any in the hole, just around the outside of it. These mm. things start swarming out, getting all into the white of the powder, and then flying around like mad things, covered in the uh -huh. powder. It's like they did it to themselves, almost like cats and catnip, <laughs> like rolled in it. Like they rolled. Yeah. Right. Okay. And just, uh, it just adhered to them somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Correction, Hobbs in the ch in the chat. It's it wasn't. It's not in the ground. They're in rocks that are above the ground. It's like gotcha. de decorative rocks. They're pretty big, and they built a little home in there. Anyway, they start rolling around in it, Brian. They start flying around a little bit, getting, and you can tell they're. I can't tell if they're pissed or if they're just confused or I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In pain. Ten minutes later, that hive is gone. Nothing left. All the bees oh. either died right there or got the f out. Wow! And there, it's there's no, it's all done. It's all evacuated. It was insane. I love. So, it. what do you do with that stuff if, um, uh, if it's up high? I mean, you can't you can't fling powder. No, that was yeah. exactly my question, and I don't have an answer. Yeah. I don't know how they plan to yeah. do that. Maybe there may be instructions that says you can mix it with water or something. I don't know. Sure, sure. Um, Interesting. But it was weird. I wish I had the brand or the name. I have the bear name. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe I can find it that way. Bayer Hornet yeah. Powder. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> Bayer. <laughs> uh, top bet. Oh, wasp powders. I guess this is a thing. Okay. Bear okay. Tempo. Here it is. Tempo. Yeah, this is it. Uh, I'll send you a link, and this looks just like, uh, just El like what you what El you found. Yeah. yeah, it looks like Elmer's glue. Look at that. Whoops, why didn't it work? It thinks I'm sending you a code. <laughs> don't send me, don't send me a code. Why is it doing that? Discord, knock it off. Okay, there we go. Uh, here you go, chat. You can see it as well. Put it up okay. here on the screen. Um, One percent dust. Yeah. Tempo one percent dust for insects. <laughs> uh, building structures. Bizarre. You just put it wherever they're hanging out or in the wall. Like, like it's a great for use in walls, crawl spaces, other hidden locations. So I guess it's a little more specific to the to mm -hmm. the rocks, which is why he sent it because we had brought it up on a skim or something. Now, now this one does say keep out of reach of children. It does. Well, ours did too. It just didn't say. Oh, it, did. okay. it didn't have any. Uh, yeah, that's what I was saying. Is it had that warning, but it said nothing oh, about. Right said nothing about poison control like gotcha. okay ingesting it or any like adult warnings none of that was on there gotcha okay. or pets I misunderstood i thought you said it did not have any of that stuff okay. yeah and i thought it would have at least pet stuff it didn't have any of that on there mm -hmm. um i still don't trust it so i didn't let the dogs around but anyway. we uh i noticed that there was a new uh hive being built little uh, paper wasp hive being built in our in the rafters above our patio and it's where we hang out. Like it's right there at our our table. We've got stuff out there, and it's you know we go outside when it's nice and cool out, and sit there and eat dinner or whatever. So I'm like, all right, got to take care of it. So dusk, I got the uh, the spray out, and wait until, you know, till it was uh, dusk, and they're all back there. And then I like fire that thing at the um, at the the wasp nest, and it it foams up all around it. And I like, all right, job well done. And I walk away, and then I realize. Um, Tina's got several, uh, herb 
planters <laughs> around. Oh, oh no! One of them directly under the glop of of foamy wasps that just landed poison foamy wasps that just land on it. I said, "Was that was that uh, one planter right there? Is that uh, was that herbs you're gonna eat?" She says, "Yep. Now it's decorative. Yeah. <laughs> now it's just oh, gonna shoot. look pretty. Oh well. Yep. Oh well. No. That's no a bummer. Dill. Yeah. No dill for our pickles. <laughs> Kim, Kim does the same thing, and I'm. I, I have to be careful because I don't know what stuff yeah. is. Some things look yeah. like weeds to me. I almost pulled something out the other day, and she's like, "No, that's the citronella plant that keeps the mosquitoes away." And like, I don't know, looks like a weed. <laughs> yeah, last time, last time I did one of those, she grabbed uh, the planter that was underneath it and moved it. And this time, she was right next to me and didn't even think about it. So I was like, "Well." You didn't do it, so I can't feel too bad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you didn't think of it either, so it's, it's not on me. Well, take it from a new convert. Bare tempo 1% dust for insects is pretty yeah. great. It did exactly what it said it would do. I checked it this morning again. No activity, nothing. Just wow. gone. Okay. And Good. I actually feel like they bailed. Like they didn't kill them. They just got the F out. <laughs> like they they packed up and left. There weren't bee carcasses everywhere, or hornet carcasses, or wasp carcasses everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And you can use it for ants. You can use it for um, uh, termite. Anything that's bugging you, bugs. Yeah. You can do it. It just has to. Just probably has to be on a on a ground surface, not on a roof or a ceiling surface. Yeah. Yeah. If those just figure it, out a way to make it into a. Uh, a snowball paste that you could just huck at the ceiling. <laughs> oh, there you go. Get some water, mush it up in your hands. <laughs> right, a little spitball kind of thing. Too. Yeah, maybe use some gloves, I guess. Yeah, please do. I yeah. would recommend that. Um, all right, we got a phone call that I think is awesome. I don't know if you sent a fridge in to get fixed. I didn't, but this guy thinks we did. <laughs> okay. So here's a call we got on the hotline. Check it out. Uh, I don't know nothing about no show. Uh, I'll yeah. Uh, the refrigerator's fixed. Um, you, you, you might want to, you might want to come get it. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Here's the thing. <laughs> Got a little Elvis at the end, didn't he? A little bit of Elvis. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, Fridge just left the building. <laughs> when you call that number, the first thing it says is, you know, state which show you want to leave a thing for, and it obviously really confused this guy. So I think I got a little high bird in there from that guy. That's what that was. Yeah. 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 I hope That's he. That's really funny. I hope he found the real owners of the fridge. <laughs> I hope maybe it's Birdham. Maybe it's Birdham's fridge. Could be. <laughs> Birdham's fridge. Ah, Birdham. Yeah. No, that's great. I hope. Uh, I hope we get further messages saying, oh, "Look, this fridge has now been here for three weeks. Come and get it." <laughs> yeah. Come get your Thanks damn fridge. Oh, I would love it if they called back. That'd be amazing. No, because that means somebody's without their fridge. I know, but it would be great. Well, I mean, we can't do anything about it, right? We're stuck. Yeah, We're yeah. stuck just having a good time. You know, so that's all we would do. Is so. What information now? Now in the in the age of uh, um, identity theft and and spam calls and phishing and things like that, what information now is it that you don't want to put in your outgoing message you don't want to put your full name yeah you don't want to put your i I think you don't even want to necessarily put the phone number oh great because if yeah because uh if somebody gets to it in a way that isn't by dialing the number now they have that number and they know it works yeah yeah i agree Um, i'm trying to think what i would do i guess if that happens with lyft like if somebody if I'm driving for Lyft and somebody calls to say, hey, I'm actually going to be um, at the house next door, so just pull up in front of, you know, 8142 instead of 8140, then, but if I don't answer it, it'll go to my voicemail. They won't know my number until they hear my voicemail and it tells them my actual number. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. now that you're saying this, I don't know. I don't know what the right yeah. thing to, what is the right thing to do in 2024? I guess you just, I was thinking, I wonder if you just say, uh, uh, you just give the last four digits. You've uh, called uh, on my number, and it ends with four five one three. <laughs> and uh, if that's what you're expecting, then leave a message. Press one now. You could say at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, interesting. I uh, that reminds me. You said Lyft. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It reminds me of a joke, and I wonder if you've heard this joke. It was a Lyft. It was literally a Lyft driver joke, but okay. it could it All could right. work for Uber or even a. It could work yeah. for almost anything. It could be a taxi driver, but the joke went like this. It's very stupid. Here you go. You ready for this joke? I'm ready. Friend told me this. The joke goes like this. Thanks, Darren, if you're listening for the joke. Here's what he says. He says, a nun is in the back of a lift. All right? 
Lyft driver okay. picks him up. Let's picture Brian a bit in the role of Lyft driver. Sure, it's me, me playing the role of Lyft driver yep. and Sally Field playing the role of nun. Sure. And okay. you're in the car and you say to her, boy, I've never had a nun in my car before. And, and, she, and she goes, you know, just kind of nods and smiles. No big deal. And then he says, uh-huh. uh, you know, one thing I've never done ever, I've never kissed a nun. And the nun <laughs> says, are you Catholic? And and single, and he says, "Yeah." The driver says, and she goes, "All right, pull over into that that alleyway." So they pull over an alleyway, and she just ma- max on this dude, makes out like the biggest make out he's ever had. Uh-huh. All right, with this with this nun, and they're all done making out, and they pull back out to get going, and he he has a pang of guilt in his heart, and he says, <laughs> he says. Um, I have to admit, sister, I lied. Uh, I'm, I'm Methodist, and I am married. And she says, "That's okay. My name's Kevin, and I'm going to a Halloween party." <laughs> it's pretty stupid. Nice. It's pretty stupid. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, I Good-bye, laughed. I, I laughed when Darren told me the joke. If none of you laughed at home, I don't blame you. It's pretty dumb. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, we've got a quick uh, ask, Doctor Tolbert, to play. Um, yeah, I love this. I, I love that uh, he was paged. He saw the the Tolbert signal up in the sky on the clouds yep. and responded in turn. He'd answered a white paging phone there at the hospital and uh, called in with this information regarding COVID and reinfection. Good morning, gentlemen. You're a friendly neighborhood family doc swinging by to answer Scott's question from last week about protection from COVID after COVID infection. The current consensus is that the average person is going to have about 90 days where they have decent immunity from reinfection with COVID and that drops off after that point until about six months where you're back to baseline risk. The recommendation at this point is to make sure that you're getting vaccinated and this fall we will have access to a new set of strains similar to what we get with flu shots. And that COVID vaccine will be worthwhile for anybody who has been vaccinated before and anyone who hasn't in protecting against further infection. For what, it's good to be careful, so make sure you're wearing a mask if you have a cough or are sneezing or have other respiratory symptoms, and try to steer clear of other folks that are doing the same. And ventilation is absolutely a good idea if you're in a small space with folks that have symptoms and are concerned about catching what they have. As always, you can page me anytime for any questions, and I hope you guys have a great day. See ya. Page him. I love page him, doctor. That's great. <laughs> All right, that makes sense. So, Brian, you got three little, months little of deeper. solid immunity, and then you got like another Woo-hoo! three after that of like pretty okay drop off immunity. Yeah, which is good because I'll probably, that'll be about the time I get the, uh, the booster and the fall flu shot and all that stuff. So, yeah, it's usually around totally uh, works. what, like yeah. September, October, or whatever they tell us to mm-hmm. do. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is good because in two months, oh my gosh, two months, I've got yeah. the, uh, the Southeast Tadpole Meetup, and uh, so I'll be I'll be I'll be clean and and uh, still immune. That's right, strong immunity. So long as somebody doesn't bring something worse and blow it on you, hopefully they won't. <laughs> right, I might get chlamydia, but yeah. I won't get COVID. <laughs> well, good luck on that front. Uh, nicely done, Doctor Tolbert. Always good to hear from you, man. And uh, anytime you hear us say something dumb medically, please feel free to toss a, a, a file our Absolutely. way. Absolutely, yes. Uh, and sure. I hope he enjoyed New York. I guess he was in New York for a bunch of time and seemed pretty cool. He's he was, still there. Yeah, he's, he's still, always uh, still there? He was, okay. he was, he's at Niagara Falls right now waiting to get on the um, the Lady of the Mist. Mm. Have you been to the falls before? I have never been to Niagara Falls. We had the Niagara Gazette and that was one trip I did not get to go on. Mm. And um, yeah. I would have. I would like to. My wife's been. She liked it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, my went. only experience with that is uh, Superman <laughs> and uh, Lois Lane jumping into the falls, and and pretty much sure that that uh, Superman was going to save her. That's right. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, and every other all the all the movies we saw with people in barrels and stuff that was a thing mm-hmm. for a long yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, what a time to be alive. I think but, people still do ride barrels down Niagara Falls. Crazy. I cannot imagine doing anything crazier. Personally, no, no. Unless I thought I was gonna, if I knew I was gonna die the next day, I might do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, no, I don't think so. I if think I was gonna I'd die rather, anyway, you know, it's just like, yeah, not even if I was gonna die anyway, is like, uh, I don't think any way of dying would be uh, better <laughs> <laughs> or worse, I'm sorry, than uh, uh, being in a barrel going off of Niagara Falls and hitting a rock or something. No, thanks. Well, nope. what if they said to you, Brian, 
you're going to burn to death tomorrow. Would you prefer? Oh. Would that change oh, it at all? Jeez, God, I hate these kind of. You questions. You don't like these. Um, you don't like these either ors. They're they're hard. I really don't like these either ors because they both always they always both really suck. Yeah. Uh, uh, God. Burning or drowning? Oh, yeah. Neither, neither one sounds. And I don't think I want either one. I mean, yeah. I, I can't. There's not one that I like more than the other. Let's put it that okay. way. They both are. They both are 100 horrible. There you go. All right. So one's no. not 99 percent horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it might help if my barrel was on fire and then they pushed it over into the water. I would feel at least like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the water will at least kill these flames. But other than that, maybe, yeah, I'm still gonna yeah. die. Uh, all right. Well, well done. Let's do this. Uh, 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 uh. Very patiently sitting there waiting to say something is one yes. Brian Dunaway. Hi, Brian Dunaway. How are you? Oh, hi, Scott and Brian. How's it going? Good, man. Good, good. That is the look at you. You are a pro. He does not say a word until he is introduced and welcome. He knows oh, how to right. podcast. He's been podcasting for a long time. He he gets it. That's right. He knows. He knows. The I rules. know yeah. when to wait my turn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now yeah. that I'm talking, though, you guys shut up. I'm talking. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. You, <laughs> you know you. You know you. We are taking our fourth caller today, and ooh, look who it is. Oh wait, is that who I think it is? It is. It's. Uh, I'm not going to say his name because I'll screw it up again. Yanni, Yanni, Janny, y- Yana, Jane, Yana, 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 Janani, Janani, uh, Jean. Hi, hi, Janani. Welcome back to the program. How are you? <laughs> Hello. Just in addition, I'm changing my name. Yeah. Right. <laughs> to Janani. Not because Brian, of us, I hope. From now on. Yeah. Just to make nice. things more simple for you, Scott. It's, yeah. It's Brian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Brian Regan joke. I'm all there about easy. Go. Easy is good. Uh, welcome to the show, man. It's uh, always good to have you on here. We're going to play a little game. Brian Dibbett will explain the rules of said game, and we'll go from there. Brian, take it away. I will. It's time to play the Tadpooly Feud. I've surveyed the Tadpool on some nerdy topics, and Scott and Brian, you have to predict the answers that they gave us. It is their job to see how many of those answers they can guess. Yanni, your job is more important than ever because you're going to be working with either Scott or Brian, and if your team wins, you get a prize package of the letter includes uh the aforementioned prizes we tried to give away monday heimrich and 762 hard life uh person that that won them was indeed the uh the brad that i drove here in a lift uh from arvada but he could not use those prizes so they went back in the pool and they are now available to you nice thank you brad thank you good luck Thank you, Brad. Thank you. Brad. Look Thanks, at the Brad. Gener- look at the generosity on Brad. You know that's right. Uh, so if you guys are ready, we will uh, begin the game. Put your hands on your buzzers and give your best answer to this. We asked 519 tadpoolers to name a vampire. <laughs> Uh, Scott, I was, uh, let's, let's, I was waiting for more. I know you were. I know you were. <laughs> uh, let's do the Lestat vampire sure. Lestat. Sure. What is, what is Show me a vampire Lestat. <laughs> what is from what is interview wrong with you? With what do you mean? What's vampire? wrong with me? It's number two, man. What do you mean? That's a good high number. What are you talking about? You crack smoking. One answer will beat it, Brian. <laughs> do you think you know a vampire that's more popular than Lestat? Did, more popular than Lestat? Let me think. A vampire everybody knows would it be a Dracula? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Show me Dracula. Oh, he is number one. one. Damn it! I was hoping he was way down there. <laughs> Gosh, you're all you're all like my grandparents at home with these answers. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> All right. That's uh, very good. Well, Brad, that means you've got control of the board. You've also got Yana as a uh, teammate here. You've got a uh, bunch of strikes and eight answers to choose from still on the board. Nice. All right. How you feeling about uh, vampires over there, Yan? I love them. You love them? <laughs> oh, love maybe me. a little too much, maybe. Mm. Well, I was fast on the... Co- Ooh, maybe mm. perhaps you're a vampire. Sure. Well, mm. I played the fifth. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, very, uh, there you go. All uh, right. Hey, do you have one or do you want me to toss another one out? Uh, well, do you want a count that likes to count? Ooh. Oh, I, count, I, count Dracula. I, or not count. He put count um, yeah, I think he put count Dracula on there, but that's not a. Yeah, but he's thinking oh, the count, like count. the Muppet. I know, yeah, the, the count. count. That's the right. Count. Okay. The count who likes to count. Yeah. The count who likes uh, to count. Uh, oh, so uh, 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 Count Von. Oh, yeah, okay. That count. Okay, Sesame Street count. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> the best yeah. count. The most is important that, count. That's the best I love this answer. answer. <laughs> I'm going to go with our, our special guest here. Is that the guest? <laughs> 
You don't want to say his name either because you're afraid you're going to screw it up. That's your deal. I understand. All right. Yana? <laughs> Yana, we is that, uh, we're going count? Von Count? You're sounding uh, ominous, but yes, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's my job not to give, my uh, favorite. Go, I love give it anything away one way or the other. Yeah. All right. Show me uh, one bet, two bets. Ah, ah, ah. Show me Count Von Count. Good points, good points, good points. Oh. Nine is very yes. good. Points. Yeah. Very good. Yes. Mm. Uh, you've got 10 points uh, 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 compared to Scott's two. <laughs> <laughs> While technically not a vampire, um, I have one if do, you do not have any more. Do it. I want to hear what your uh, technically not a vampire for a vampire question is. Yeah. 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 Relayed. That's right. He's a daywalker. Yeah. So technically kind of not a vampire. Yeah. I mean, he's got... He's, he, 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 he need, he can bite you for the blood. He's got stuff that makes him different. You're right. That's fair. All right, good enough. He's he's a vampire like. Yeah. That's right, right. He's vampire ish, <laughs> you know? He's vamp yeah, he's he's vampire adjacent. Let's go with uh, the blade. All right. I always bet on black. Yeah. Number three. Woo! Nice. I know that was passenger fifty seven, but uh still it's a Wesley Snipes. But you line. but you said it when you watched Blade regardless, right? I so did, I did. Matter. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yes. All right. You got another one, Yana? The, I have, I have uh, one. If not, well, you tell that one then. Okay, I have a. I, have <laughs> I a don't want to say mine. Okay, I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a sparkly, a very. Uh, I'm, I'm Team Edward. Oh, okay, so you. a very a sparkly <laughs> vampire is what I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. Gosh, yeah, dang yeah. it, dude. Ugh. So I would like I would like Edward Cullen, please. All right, one Edward Cullen, maybe coming up. Show me Edward Cullen, mm. number four. Yeah, right down the line. Ooh, uh, nice. Do you think people put that on there ironically, or do they really like him? Do you think? I mean, twenty nine people put it as their answer. Wow, uh, out of five hundred nineteen. So that's maybe half of those people did it jokingly ironically but a lot of people i think probably put it because they they like the twilight movies yeah probably mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no no judgment except i hate it but yeah. no judgment <laughs> sure no i judgment love that it's all. name a vampire not your favorite vampire nope, not your least vampire. favorite vampire which is usually what exactly. if it does exactly um, yeah no you know and and the reason we do this is um if i'm going through and i'm doing the survey and i see Name your favorite this. Name your favorite that. I try and move right, things right. around so it's like, uh, let's not let's not just let's call it uh, name a vampire or I name a, <laughs> name a vampire who uh, lives at the end of their movie or something like that. Yeah, like I yeah. try and make it so it's something a little bit more than just name your favorite this. Name your favorite. Well, that. I think yeah. also it doesn't matter anyway because we found typically what usually happens is just people name where a vampire they know. Yes. Right. right. Yeah. And so, I want okay, to. I want, him, I want yeah. it to be the first one off the top of their head. I want Rorschach test vampire business here. Sure. Nice. Sure. Nice. All right. So, do you have another? Do Do you have any vampires in mind that you might not know the name of, but know oh, the show? I have show another one that movie? I hope no one Ooh. said, but Ooh, okay. I fear people did. Ooh. Okay. I want one. Mobius. I want it. Mobius. Mobius. Yes, that's a good one. Wait, Mo right. Morbius is what he means. Morbius. Mor Morbius. Mor yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We both said Mobius. That's fine. You all Morbius. said Mobius like it's never ending. And by God, thank yeah, goodness. The French that artist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank the Lord on high. All right. Show me. Um, Morbius. Morbius. No. Oh, uh, uh, Morbius was in the list, though, uh, but low. Um, in the twenties, I think we'll look back on Morbius and think it was better than we remember. What do you think? You think so? I don't think so. I don't think. We'll you don't think so? Back. All I right, think all right. You you've watched it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, we'll yeah. film sack it and have a good time, but I don't think I we're going to. Let's put this way. Exactly. I I yeah. went in, I went in with uh, with Morbius already knowing everybody hated it. Yeah. So oh, you know, okay. it, was, it was like it was like, oh, let's just see how bad this is. And I'm like, well. I, I mean, saw it opening night, and uh, oh, you're traumatized. I, got I was you. traumatized. I was I very you. disappointed. <laughs> yeah, I still yeah. haven't seen but, it. <clears throat> but but uh, Madame Web makes Morbius look a little bit better. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> makes those Venom movies right. real good. Um, oh yeah, yeah. All right, Scott, back over to you. Let's see here. What are we not done? It's kind of everybody. Uh, all right, let's do. Um, I don't remember her name. Let me ask you a question. If I name an actor, 
that played oh. a thing? Will that be enough, or do we need something? I think. You might need to tell me like what thing they were in, but you don't have to remember their vampire name, but the actor and the, the property. How's oh, that? oh um, you don't have to remember their vampire name. What is this? Well, I mean... That, <laughs> All right, you know I'll be safer. Let's stick. Let's stick with. Um, I don't know which one's going to be more popular. I'll just say Laszlo from from uh, what we do in the shadows. Oh, that's a great right. one. It's either him or one. others. Yeah. Other vampires yeah. from that show are probably on sure. here too. But yeah, um, sure. let's go with him. All right, show me uh, Laszlo Cravensworth from yes. what we do in the shadows. Uh, oh, oh really? Shit. No, but. That was number 11, so you get oh, a bonus guess. Sweet. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, shit. Nice. I, gotta, I need nice. to capitalize here. Um, you do need to capitalize on that. Uh, oh, gosh. Um, all right. Uh, let's say uh, Count Chocula. Dang it. I wanted that one. <laughs> I am so glad you got that one. That's got to be up. All right. Show me those delicious chocolate marshmallows. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Count Chocula. Damn oh, it. Really? No, number, uh, number 15, though. It was popular, but. Blueberry, uh, Frankenberry, or Count Chocula? Which one? Go. Count, Count Chocula. Chocula. Count, yeah, Count Chocula. Oh, yeah. Frankenberry. I, was... I, got, a, I, got, a, I got a little Frankenberry. Is, Frank- uh, but is yeah, fruit fruit, is fruit, fruit uh, off the table? I never had fruit. Uh, it was it never was off it. the table for so long. I sometimes don't even think about it. I don't think I ever had it. Red dye number five or something. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. But I do. Or, I'll or tell you this. Tarantino five. bought Tarantino bought every box for his movies. So. The, <laughs> the problem with Frankenberry. Frankenberry had a taste, almost like cough syrupy taste to the. Mm-hmm. Berry flavor, whatever the hell that even yeah. means, had a uh, right aftertaste. Yeah, and at least yes. Chocula had like a chocolate. It tasted like yeah. chocolate. So yeah, yeah. Well, it tasted like fake chocolate. But yeah, it tasted like chocolate. Not, yeah, 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 yeah. Ass chocolate. Yeah, but sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. All right, your turn. <laughs> I blew it. Two strikes Back for me. Over to Brian and Yana. Yana, what are you thinking? You got another one? Uh, Angel. From oh, Buffy. Angel's a great one. Let's get some Buffy in here. All right. All right. Angel. Okay. Show me Angel. Ooh. Yeah, number seven in the list. Nice. There. Dang it. Big, that that feels that's like That's really favorites. good. Yeah, that does. Uh, didn't even think about Buffy. There's probably a few others in there in the Buffy world. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I can think of one. I'll see if you say it or not. Now, you put Count Dracula. I sure did. You now, did. are we going to... Mm. <laughs> I want to do stuff like... <laughs> What about characters based off Vlad the Impaler? And I'm like, hmm. I mean, Vlad the Impaler is Dracula, right? Well, based on, right? Oh, I that's see what you mean. The that's actual the idea. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Y'all didn't want to go with that one? <laughs> Do you have voices in your yeah. head, Brian, that we're not hearing? No, oh. you didn't hear what? I, I didn't hear him either. What did he say? Not Oh, that's oh. good. Oh yeah, like the How's you know, doing? like Peter from. Um, I'm not talking to myself. I hear Yana over here we, talking. We really didn't hear. It. I didn't hear it either. Me and Brian didn't hear it. Uh, well, hear well, let's say <laughs> let's check that. I want to see if this one's on here because that one that right. Nosferatu is badass. I can't wait for I mean, that. Nosferatu movie. is the movie. What's the name of the uh, the the vampire? Oh, oh, that's oh, you right. Know, I've always thought it was that. That's that's weird. <laughs> I've watched. I'll give you a hint in favor of Yana winning. I would I would throw to you the it is another count, if that helps. Okay. Okay. <laughs> count Count Vlad. There you go. I heard it. I heard him say it. Uh, show me Count Orlock. Orlock. That's right. Nice. Yep. Number eight. Good points. And I Good think point. that might even put. I think that put Scott out of contention. Yeah, I think that clinched it. We just uh, we just sucked your blood. Twenty one. Twenty one remaining points on the board, and Scott would need uh, thirty to okay. tie. So How, now is can everyone? Just say whatever crazy crap comes to mind. Is, is, is everyone? Totally. Everyone here as excited as I am for that new. Uh, Nosferatu movie. I cannot wait. For yes. That. Yes. Freaking the witch, the Vavitch guy doing it. Oh man. The mm-hmm. Vavitch. Can't wait. Anyway. Well, I think we should go with Kiefer Futterlin. <laughs> 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 I didn't think of Lost Boys. That's a good how do, you, how do you like those maggots, Michael? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Yana? Sure. Sure. Why not? <laughs> sure. Why not? <laughs> Sure, whatever. Go ahead. I do love it. his tone. I've always uh, loved what it. What was his character's name, though? I'm trying to remember. Uh, it was something I'll simple. You. I'll tell you. It was okay. David. I'll tell David. you. David. Yeah, David. David. There you go. There All right. Go. Show me David from The Lost Boys. Oh. Oh. Number uh, 18 in the list. Okay. Nice. Interesting that they went that way. 
I still feel pretty strong about somebody in here or somebody from what we do in the shadows has got to be in here. So I'm going to say oh, yeah. um, Nandor made it. Oh, that's really actually probably better. I love yeah. Nandor. Okay. Well. Show me Nandor the Relentless because I don't relent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number six. Nice. <laughs> Everyone loves Nandor. I ate it. I sucked the blood of someone who was doing drugs, and now I am a I am a wizard. I freaking love that one. Um, all right, uh, la, 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 la. a spike from uh, oh Buffy, the Buffy Deep. spike. Yeah, there yeah. you go. All right, good cho- good choice. Show me spike. Oh, number five. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Solid this out. Pretty, pretty, I don't. I can't. I can't win, but I like the feeling that I could. Yeah, it's a nice it's a nice little rally. Uh, one answer left on the board, Brian with uh, Brian and Yana with a score of thirty two. Scott with a score of thirteen. The ten nice. point answer still oh, remaining on the board. I could win actually if I got it. No, I don't by know. A, how you could. I don't know. By a point, do I don't that, know. But... No, by a uh, by a point plus ten. Yeah, is twenty three. Oh, he's thirty two. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I read twenty. Short. I read twenty two. I'm, I'm being stupid. Uh, okay. Well, either way, I want him to win, so it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm all out of vampires. Uh, uh, we'll do... Go with, Colin, go with Grandpa. Co- Colin Robinson from uh, okay. What We Do in the Shadows. Let's get him in there. Colin Robinson. All right, show me Colin Robinson, the energy vampire. Oh, look <laughs> Number at Number 10, well done. So not Grandpa He's, from the Munsters. No, fine. Not, no. Not Grandpa from the Munsters. He was on the list, or he, uh, he was in the stack. Uh... Uh, Alucard uh, from Helsing, okay. yeah. Bill Compton yeah. from True Blood, so okay. Oh, uh, Strad von <laughs> Zarovic uh, from D and D Forgotten Realms, uh, Asterian from Baldur's Gate, Vlad the Impaler, David from I know Vlad the Impaler really should have been lumped into Dracula, right. but I felt you know what if you say yeah. Vlad the Impaler, I'm going to give you a separate. Well, I'll give you a buzz because it was below ten. Um, <laughs> Selena from Underworld, uh, Deacon yeah. Frost, Lewis from uh, or Louis from Interview with a Vampire, Mister Burns from The Treehouse of Horror. <laughs> That's a good uh, one. That is a good one. Vladislav the Poker. Uh, Abigail. Mm. Bela Lugosi. Bela Lugosi oh. Claudia from Interview with a Vampire. Count Ducula. Oh, uh, Eric Northman one. from True Blood. Klaus Michelson. Uh, Nick Cage. I'm a vampire. Oh, yeah, <laughs> duh. That's a good one. Uh, <laughs> we watched that on Film Sack. Yeah. We did, as well as his buddy Renfield. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Thomas Wraith from the Dresden Files, Vampirella, Abby from Let Me In, Alistair, Avril Levine, uh, Barnabas Collins. I'm sorry. The last for Avril Levine. Hold on. Can we? <laughs> I'm trying to understand. Did she play something? I think or? She just looks like a vampire. All right. So okay. Did you Did you miss? Uh, uh, did you mention? Uh, uh, was it Chris Sar- Sarandon? Chris Sarandon. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah, from really, uh, uh, yeah. From Fright Night, Fright Night, oh, from Fright Night, yeah, Humperdinck, yeah. Uh, yes. I don't no, have the, I don't have the, the list, I don't yeah. have the Fright Night connection that Dunaway does. He, what is his, what, what is his show. character name? Do we know? I was trying to remember. Yeah, uh, like something weird, like Charlie or something. It seems like you know. He well, was, there is a there's a Charles in here that I didn't recognize, so maybe it is. Um, Bobby Kotick, uh, Benicula, <laughs> um, <laughs> Capitalism, a real vampire. Yeah. In okay. <laughs> uh, Count Dracula from Hotel Transylvania, I guess, because <gasps> it's a different nice. one. The Muppet, uh, nope, that's um, uh, Count Chuck or Count uh, Count von Count Count Floyd from no. uh, SCTV. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's oh cool. yeah, uh, I, I, forgot forgot that I love that character. Yeah, yeah. Damon Salvatore one. from Vampire Diaries, Denathrius. Uh, Grandpa Munster, there we go. There I shall go. name him Poker Face, also from Buffy. Yeah. Uh, Jackie Dakota, Jasper from L.A. by Night, Joel Austin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, let's see. Marceline, my mother-in-law. Nadja oh, finally gets a mention in the list. The lowest nice. of the uh, she wow. should, she shouldn't, the Shadows Vampires. She shouldn't be low. She's amazing on that show. She wasn't, is, wasn't Eddie Murphy a vampire in something? Um, yeah. He was, uh, uh, yes. What was that called? shit oh my gosh i can see the cover box yeah i can't remember I, that's all i can visualize vampire yes, in brooklyn they're smiling vampire in brooklyn yeah is that it on. yeah wow. that's oh, it. nice i just searched for it fast but it's a west craven movie i can't believe west craven yeah that. Mm. we should watch that shit what are we doing oh yeah uh rain from blood rain um vamp from metal gear solid 
Uh, mm-hmm. And Vicky Nelson from the TV series Blood Ties. Nope. Wow. No Castlevania there then? I guess not. Well, no, who, did not see. But Castlevania is just Dracula. so It's, it's just Dracula, right? Yeah. yeah. It's not yeah. Uh, Belmont. I mean, it's anime. He's Dracula. not a vampire. He's not a vampire. Yeah. An- anim- anime vampires don't count. Sorry, everyone. Just don't anime count. vampires don't count. <laughs> That's, that hurt deep. <laughs> it uh, it cuts hurts. deep. Well, I think, this is, I think this is great because it means Yana has won. And uh, not only yeah. you, you've won the big battle and the small battle, that small battle is to get me and Dunaway to say your name right. And I think that's enough to celebrate. But yeah. you're going to walk away with some some awesome prizes. Uh, also, Fletcher saying this to you. Congratulations. Brian, tell him what he's won one more time. Yeah, absolutely. You won a copy of uh, Heimrich and uh, 762 Hard Life. Both of those just been sent to you via Discord. Uh, use them on Steam. And big thanks to... Uh, nighttime visions who sent these to us no uh louis loyo mm. sent these to us nice so Ghana, how do you feel how do you feel about your big one thank you hey. heimrich yeah. is my favorite maneuver oh the, Heim- yes. the heinrich <laughs> we'll see you next time all right good stuff hey dunaway friday oh, no, you no. and i are getting together to talk about video games again because yes. we love the old stuff we're big uh, we're big into it i found uh, i don't know if i sent it to you no i did send it to you the there's a new board game call or a card game called uh Class, console wars console wars yeah i cannot wait to that see what cool. that is yeah, that looks, looks awesome. i know that looks neat we'll yeah, probably you, bring that up and talk about it some but i don't know very much about it um yeah, but, if you grew up during the 90s and you were part of the console wars between uh nintendo and sega it was a great time to be alive very exciting things as well as a book called console wars and now yeah. there's a card game apparently being yeah. kickstarted yeah. it's pretty cool i'm excited well what are we covering on play retro on friday at 1 30 this Friday, we're we're doing flashback, the quest for identity, one that's been requested quite a few times. Finally, getting around to it. Yep. I thought it always started off on the Amiga. It released on the Amiga first, but it was designed for the Mega Drive. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, it's if you like Prince of Persia, uh, in in that type of game where you kind of go screen to screen and got to make some very smart choices about how to move and solve some environmental puzzles. You're gonna like flashback. Plus, it's kind yep. of like futuristic, cyberpunky kind of stuff. Oh, Aliens. It's awesome. It's so good. It's in my top five Genesis games I ever bought. Roto, rotoscoping. Yep, rotoscoping. Rotoscoped. That was a cool thing for a while. Out of this world. Yeah. Same people, or some of the same people made it. Yeah. Anyway. I, I heard actually that it is. It's a CD game on a cartridge. Oh my lord, is that true? Well, I had a CD version on. S- Sega CD? Yes, yeah, Sega CD. It did eventually make it to a real CD, but it yeah. was really large. It was like 24 megabyte card or something, which was pretty big. It was big back then, yeah. At the time. Yeah. And the sound in the CD version was so good. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Anyway, and we'll talk about the horribly failed uh, sequel that they released this year to Zero Fanfare. Oh. We'll talk about that. Yeah. Anyway, that's Friday, 1.30 Mountain Time. Uh, check out uh, frogpants.com slash play retro for more. Brian Dunaway, please kiss our butts. Oh, no, you. All right. <laughs> we did it. Uh, we, we got some it. time for a little bit of news. Let's dive in here and do some. Time for the news brought to you by. Brought to you by the Coverville 3D Etsy store. Yeah, we haven't talked about this in a while. If you go to uh, etsy.com slash shop slash Coverville 3D, you'll find my store. Uh, some uh, kyber crystal holders for you lightsaber kyber crystal collectors out there. You go to Disneyland all the time getting those kyber crystals. Or the morning deck. I'm sorry, the Morning Stream Steam Deck Stand uh, in any color you like, as long as it's one of the colors I have, still available. And uh, if you're a Marvel Snap player, uh, even custom frames with your name on it and your logo, like I did for Scott. Did a Frog Pants one for Scott. That's a Marvel Snap card. Yep. Yeah. It's over there. I'd I'd show it. That's right. Way over there. Can't reach it. It's awesome. Way, way too far. Too far to reach. I have most, most of Brian's 3D printing things are right behind me. In reaching oh, distance, really? yeah. yeah. Except Batman, yeah. he's over there waiting to get painted. But uh, you can't see her. But there's my uh, my Furiosa. Uh, I will prize that until my death, till my fiery death. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they came out great. And then Shani, Shani over, over there. there somewhere by her. They're hanging out. They're two women that can get stuff well, of done. Of course. Yeah. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Uh, let's get into the story about a middle school uh, banning all black clothing, citing mental health concerns. They're worried okay. that having all black clothes means I should have. We're, we're trying to ban goth. Is yeah, what we're trying to. Do. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say you're gonna you're gonna mm-hmm. you're gonna ban uh, freaking the cure. I mean, what are you gonna do? <laughs> exactly. uh, it says uh, they cite mental health concerns. Texas middle school, of course, it's freaking Texas, is banning students from wearing all black clothing because school officials say it is associated with mental health issues. Not that they want to actually check and see if it is. They just assume it is. 
Right. No, it's associated with it. So we we assume that all kids who wear all black have mental health issues yeah. that need to be. Brilliant. And this will solve it, by the way. If yeah. they wear bright, fun clothing, oh, totally problem solved. Yeah, geniuses down there. Uh, students at Charles Middle School in El Paso, Texas, headed to school Monday, uh, days after a letter from a principal, Nick DeSantis. He's got a last name that sort of invokes emotions. Mm -hmm. A little bit of uh, uh, displeasure. A little bit. Uh, yeah. Boy, you don't hear anything about him right now. No, he's kind of uh I thought he'd be like, a... you know, something. I, th I, I thought he was yeah. going to be the VP yeah. pick, to be honest. I thought they'd pick him over Vance. I don't know why they didn't. I, yeah. thought, I thought he was like everyone's favorite. I don't understand things in politics. Let's move on here. Uh, it says here, the letter <laughs> says the school is eliminating all black clothing because, again, it is associated with depression and mental health issues and or criminality. This is a broad assumption. Wow. No kidding. I wear black t-shirts all the time. Nobody mm -hmm. accuses me of taking anything or doing anything yeah. stupid. Well, yeah, maybe. and kids who wear bright clothing also can have uh, mental health issues as well and depression. It's, you know. In fact, it's, most it's of them not... do. The ones that are smiling are often the ones that need the help. They just don't tell you. Mm -hmm. You know? These guys don't seem like the brightest bulbs in the batch. No, they do not. Uh, Norman D. La Rosa, president of the El Paso Teachers Association, explained in more detail why the policy is in place and why uh, what clothing is allowed. She says teachers see a sudden change in students going from dressing with color to all black when they are depressed or stressed. Again, this isn't very scientific. There's a lot of hearsay. Uh, quote, what they are not allowing is for students wearing clothing that is black from top to bottom. They can wear black shorts to go to PE. They can wear it on free day or free dress days, but they just can't wear it from top to bottom. So you can't wear black, sh you know, black pants, black shirt, black shoes. Right, but but black pants with a dark gray shirt is okay. I what if guess. what if it's got like one little tiny pattern on it or something? It's all black except for like a a logo. <laughs> uh, they must think the New Zealand All Blacks are uh, depressed. Oh, this is the most depressed oh, football can, team. Can you imagine? They probably never win a game. They're so sad over there. No, no, so sad. Um, anyway, a bunch of parents and community members are disagreeing with the policy, commenting online that clothing color doesn't define a person's mental state. Duh. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, De La Rosa says parents who are upset need to read the dress code policy very, very carefully, she says. Yeah, yeah. It's okay if they wear black shorts to P.E. Yeah. I hate we said that. it's okay I on free dress day. <laughs> I freaking hate it. Yeah. Everything about that sucks. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. we were a kid, did you ever have anything get banned while you were a kid? Like T-shirts or... Um, no, certain band names or anything like that? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was uh, during Satanic Panic for heavy metal stuff, but I don't know, even know about banning. Like, like we had no, yeah, nothing nothing clothing-wise in school was uh, verboten for us. I don't think we had anything like that either. They had some stuff where it was girls' skirts had to be a certain length, boys' shorts had to be a certain length, or you couldn't wear shorts. So there's that kind of stuff, like modesty freaking mm -hmm. rules but there was nothing on colors as far as i know you could pretty back in i don't know 85 to 88 or that range you could pretty much express yourself any way you wanted as long as it wasn't hurting somebody yeah um so this kind of stuff bugs me especially coming from a state that's all about my personal freedom except for these kids make them wear different colors not my <laughs> shirt uh let's yeah, take a break so many his friends and Tristan who would have uh, who would have had problems with this. Yeah, yeah he liked the 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 screamo he likes the, and all he that. Likes the black. He still wears the black. Yeah, you know? still he likes wears the, the black. I think let him have the black. the black. It's fine. The black is fine. Let him have the let him wear the black. You know how to wear the black. You just don't know how to keep the black. That's the best impression you're gonna get today from me. <laughs> We're going to take a break. When we come back from said break, it'll be time for Tom Merritt, some tech time, as well as recommendals after that with me, Nicole, and Brian. Uh, Randy has a meeting, so he will not be here. Uh, stick around for all that. Brian, play us a song in the meantime, please. Sure. This one. Uh, this one's fun. Boy, it's summertime, and we think about hot dogs, and what goes better with hot dogs than ketchup, mustard, and relish? That just happens to be the name of this song by Swami and the Bed of Nails. This uh uh, band features Swami John Reese of Hot Snakes, Drive Like Jehu, and Rocket from the Crypt. You've heard of them. Um, they got a brand new album called All of This Awaits You. This is the single from it. It's called Ketchup, Mustard, and Relish. Do you see the moon? The moon sees you. God bless the moon. And God bless you. Good night. Welcome to Herbal Life International.
We've returned. Who was that? One more time, please. Sure. That's Swami and the Bed of Nails uh, with their song Ketchup, Mustard, and Relish from the brand new album, All of This Awaits You. Interesting title or uh, uh, name for the band. The yes, of- Swami and the Bed of Nails. Yeah. yeah. Love to know Dude, the origin of that. Uh, he even, he even uh, like, I'll give you a little link to their photo. I'll copy uh, their photo and put sure. it in our deal. Sure. Um, I mean, he even wears the the Swami looking uh, turban and. Uh, oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, I like this. Look at they're this a very serious looking group, and they're all wearing the same shirt. But they might even be wearing the same shirt, yeah, <laughs> not just not just the shirts with the same pattern on it, but the same one shirt that all five people are wearing. I feel like I feel like these are almost okay. I'm gonna say something a little weird here, but I yeah. think it fits. These look like people yeah. we know. So, in the rear right, I think that's a version. It's a doppelganger Dunaway. <laughs> on the, or on the rear left, rather. The rear right, uh-huh. I think it looks like Bo Schwartz. Okay, I think yeah. I, I look a little like the dude on either the far left or the far right. Either one kind of a, amalgamation. And I think you look yeah. a lot like center dude. Like center dude? Yeah. Maybe, yeah. You can see my bald head under that turban. Okay, Maybe I'll here. take the dude in the glasses. Uh, uh, Tom Merritt Tom can be Merritt, this other guy. Tom Merritt on the right, yeah. 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 Turns out we're all swamis now. <laughs> That's amazing. It's like AI versions of the morning stream as swamis. Yeah, why not? Well, good luck to them. Seems like a cool band up to cool business. For sure, they're really good. All right, we're going to bring Tom in. We're going to have a little tech time and, uh, you know, see if we can't learn a thing or two. I always like doing that. Oh, I heard myself for a second, but now I, I don't. That too. Yeah. We want Tom. Hey, you know what's, uh, here's an inter- universal truth. We want Tom. And uh, thank goodness he has answered the call and is here to now, to now, today. Tom Merritt, welcome to Tanau. How are you? I I am I am to well. Thank you. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you for having me. That's uh, like any we're, like we're looking over Tom over his over the cubicle wall or something. Oh yeah, we got. Oh, sorry, I forgot I had my uh, I had my uh, monitor up. <laughs> oh, I like for it. Ergonomic reasons. Like, yeah. hey, yes, did you sure. did you hear I, what yeah, HR right, did? My my head is down in uh, in this CrowdStrike <laughs> explanation of the uh, of the Falcon sensor issue from from July nineteenth. Turns out when you want to pass parameters to an update, yeah. make sure you match the number of parameters. That's the simple version. Oh. Uh, the, uh, the, the Falcon sensor had 21 possible input fields. Uh, the instances that they were sending to update it only had 20. First couple of times they did that, it didn't cause a problem because nobody tried to use the 21st parameter. But on July 19th, uh, one of the instances uh, tried to make use of the 21st parameter, but there were only 20. And so the program got confused and said, well, wait, you're, you're telling me to use this 21st thing, but you only have 20. What am I supposed to put in there? That's out of bounds. Crash. Mm, that's really it, though. I mean, that's that's the, really it. Wow. I thought this was as the thing got more and more deep and investigated, you know, like start digging for details. I thought there'd be more than that. Tom, I thought I thought it would be like, well, it turns out some guy inserted some malware into a Linux box that was housed in another <laughs> server. You know, like some fancy technical reason. They just it's just a it's that's literally a bug. In it, it is literally a bug, and and it's the content validator didn't catch it uh, because you you just you you were just looking like okay do you do you have the right number of uh, of of content fields you do right you have less than are are necessary uh and it wasn't testing the sensors template type which was already up and had been running why would you test it it'd been running fine uh the first two instances just didn't try to use that weird 21st field uh, the third one did uh, wow. And and so they have now, uh, you know, said uh, we they they've they've put in place uh, <laughs> uh, ways to internally test for that and make sure that you know the field amounts uh, match. It's certainly one of those things where you and I can go like, well, why didn't you match the fields in the first place? Uh, but uh, I yeah, uh, it's. It's akin to like, uh, why didn't you use kilometers in, or, or millimeters instead of inches? Yeah. Uh, well, now we know. Yeah. In a way, it's a lot. You know, everybody was comparing it to this is the real Y2K or whatever. It's kind of a yeah. stupid thing they went mm-hmm. around. But in a way, it kind of is. It's a bug nobody foresaw, right. didn't think about, wide-ranging catastrophic results. Like maybe they were closer to the truth on that than we thought. 
I don't know. It's not the same because yeah. you know they thought they thought we had a date problem. This one, no one thought we had any problem until it was a problem, right? And and anybody who has worked in you know uh, code and 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 catching bugs knows how this kind of thing can happen. Uh, it thankfully gets caught most of the time. It doesn't doesn't happen, but this. I, th I think the most frustrating part about this is it's kind of a really understandable bug. And uh, the best way to catch this sort of thing is to test in a small level before you push out to a large level, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's always those weird bugs like this that you're like, ah, nobody thought that that would happen, and it did. Uh, and that's how you catch them, is you you put it in place, you run it, and go, oh, wait, it's, it's doing a weird thing. What's causing that? And then you fix it. Uh, and CrowdStrike is doing that now. It's going to do staged rollouts rather than, than pushing it to everybody at once. Uh, and if you're like, well, why didn't they do that in the first place? You know, the, the, the rationale was... Uh, they didn't have problems for years. And when you're talking about security, people want their updates as fast as possible. They want the, the latest and greatest defense against the malicious stuff that's coming at them. So you, you don't want delays if you don't need them. And, and the staged rollout is a delay. Well, it reminds us all that Brian's Thanos fist at 50% was a smart idea because then you can work out bugs and kinks, right? That's right. And then That's why I do testing. They should have just tested this. Yep, they should have exactly. tested it the way you test 3D printing. <laughs> There's a lesson here, damn it. Uh, well, no, that's that's it's super interesting. Uh, what, are there any results from this other than, well, we found it, so now we know what to do and we're going to double down on making sure it never happens again? Or is it there any other real? Yeah, they, they had already said they're going to they're gonna put in staged rollouts. Uh, re they're going to reduce you know, uh, uh, the, the, every template instance is going to be deployed to customers in stage rollouts, um, and it's going to do some some memory checks uh, and things on the content end. So if something did make it onto a machine, uh, it, it gets caught before it crashes. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's that's kind of the issue here. Uh, I, I would point people who are like, wait, I still have a few more questions about this. I want to know more details. Obviously, you can read the CrowdStrike full report, but if you want a really good summary of that report that helps you understand it without having to wade through all of it, go to the register. Uh, Jessica Lyons did a fantastic explanation of, of what was in this report uh, and it's a great summary so I highly recommend it. Nice. Well you know who else writes cool things? Tom Merritt does. Why don't you give us an update on uh, on any projects you're working on? Ooh, let, yeah let's do an update on Synced. Tom's yeah. new book dot com <laughs> yeah. Love that. Uh, okay. is 63% uh, funded uh, so it is rolling along. I have handed in the manuscript. I'm I have to say it's one of the best things I've, I was re I was going through polishing it up and I'm like wow this is really good who wrote this uh, it was me <laughs> but you know how you do that where you like go back to something after a while and, mm -hmm. and you're you're kind of like mm, that's not bad uh, that's how I felt about Sync so uh, if you would like a just a, a paperback book uh, you can go buy it at 16 pounds 99 don't get thrown off it's a UK publisher uh, but you can you can order it in the US uh, but there's also levels where you can like be on daily tech news show with a question do virtual meet and greets with me get your name at the front of the book uh all kinds of things uh, so go check that out at tomsnewbook.com please do everybody and check out the daily tech news show today at 2 30 mountain sorry 2 p.m mountain time because that's when we all get together and remind scott that that half hour hasn't been a thing for about four years now so why does he keep doing that <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll be on there talking about all kinds of fun stuff, so I'm looking forward to that. Tom Merritt, he is Ace Detect on Twitter. If you still follow that place, I don't know. He's, he's that I'm name I'm also everywhere. Ace Detect on Threads. That's right. Uh, and I've been having a lot of fun there, too. Yeah, I've been enjoying myself A lot on more Threads. fun on there. <laughs> yeah, I like it a lot more. I did a up. thing. I did a thing the other day. Uh, I wrote, no one knows what an ankle rotary engine is. Just to knowing see what would happen. Yeah. That, you know, people are going, oh, he means Wankel rotary engine. And it was really interesting to watch the number of people who are like, you idiot, you yeah. mean <laughs> Wankel rotary engine. And I can tell you exactly what it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, Did you get a uh, fair, just a, a fair fun little test. The Internet still works like the Internet. Does. Yeah. I think I sent you a gif of a girl tripping on her ankles, I think is what I did. Yes, yes, you did, because yeah. ankles, see, you got it. I it's got like, the joke. oh, yeah, this is, we're just having fun. I under, As the kids say, I understood the assignment. Tom Merritt, everybody. You did. We'll see you next time. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, Brian, you've been yes, sitting sir. on a recommendation, and we're going to talk about it now for a, a yeah. segment we call Recommendals. And I 
show Nicole offline, but that doesn't mean she is. Every, this, every week we say this. Well, yeah. Nicole's offline, but it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, she may be here. She may not be here. Let's find out as I ring her now. Uh, sometimes she forgets. Talking sometimes about, talking about Nicole. Uh, Nicole, I think, has been sitting on the same recommendal for three weeks now. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, we get to finally hear what it is. So let's do that if uh, if I can push all the right buttons. Well, what do you recommend? Oh, uh, yes. It's time for us to talk about recommendals. Three of us are here today. Uh, Andy had a meeting. So, you know, meetings. They take you away from things. But Nicole's joining us. Nicole Spag. Hi. I'm tagging in. Yeah, I'm tagging in. Tagging in. It's all right. You always have a spot on the team. What's uh, what's going on with you? How's life? Oh, I just finally pulled my phone out of my kid's hand. Oh. Thankfully. <laughs> Yeah, you know they're so they're, bored. I'm so. This summer is the longest summer ever. <laughs> I just want them to go back to school. Do they go back uh, like next week or the week after? Soon. Week after. Okay. Week after. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nineteenth and something like that. I saw the thing. I saw something yesterday. I thought of you because you live in Missouri now, right? Uh huh. And yeah, I saw a thing yeah. that I thought was kind of rude, and I just want to share it because I don't think it's very nice. Here's what it said. It said, here are the top 10 worst states to live in. And I'm preparing for like, oh, I hate these. But then I mm-hmm. see it says 10. There is no such thing. Nine. St- all states have great things about them. Eight. You know, like it looked like it was going to refute. It was a. <laughs> and then was, number one's Missouri. Yeah. It got all these phrases and statements about all states are great. All states have positives. All blah, blah. And then it got to number one. And it just said Missouri. <laughs> it made me laugh. And I thought, well, come on now. Missouri's fine. It's uh, not a big deal. It's fine. fine. It's fine. We have, we have quite a bit that I I think I mean it's it's a you know it's an easy joke. Oh, it's so. a, I, trust yeah. me, I come from an easy joke state, so I I, I feel <laughs> my <that>. my <laughs> my husband uh, likes to talk a big game about not liking Missouri, but he's done more here in Missouri than he ever did in Colorado. <laughs> oh, take that, Colorado, Brian. Take yeah, that. she's well, huh? Hmm. See how that is. <laughs> not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> not for my lack of trying. That's right. Yeah. Out there working it every day, damn it. Yeah. Um, all right, well, let's get to our recommendals today. We're going to start with Brian and a, uh, a quip and a clip, probably. Uh, hey, Brian, play your quip, quip, clip. It's a quippy clip. Um, this is, uh, yeah, what you're about to hear is a clip from a movie. Um, you won't hear the star of the movie until the very end, but you're going to hear um, the setup for the entire movie uh, all right. right in this little little clip. Here we go. You're suffering from a condition known as Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. It presents initially in much the same way as Alzheimer's. So what's the difference? Speed of progression. I'm guessing you don't mean it's slower. In your case, it's incredibly fast. What's the treatment? There is no treatment. The thing you have to remember about dementia is the thought-feeling connection. You have a thought, creates a feeling, you lose the thought, you're left with a feeling. So you'll be going along and um, all of a sudden you'll be unreasonably happy and you won't know why. Or you'll have this wave of depression and you won't know why. I'm sorry. That's okay, Doc. Even if I hated you for telling me, I'd forget soon enough. This sounds like uh, Michael Keaton. That is Michael Keaton. Okay. Yeah, this is the movie uh, Knox Goes Away, which just premiered on Max. I um, need to watch this. It's really, really good. It's um, it's interesting because it's getting some mixed reviews, and I'm not sure what the complaints are, but I, maybe I need to look at it. But no, Tina and I really enjoyed it, and it's a um, uh, fascinating and very accurate um, a depiction of this Kreutzfeld uh, Jacob disease, which is like a form of dementia. Um, Michael Keaton plays uh, uh, a guy named John Knox. He is a hitman, hitman for hire, and um, uh, which kind of becomes a little bit of a problem when you start losing your a memory or your ability to make memories or, or uh, reference memories. Um, so he is basically getting his affairs in order. He's um, reconnecting with his estranged son played by James Marsden who famously left a giant poop in a hotel room in jury duty. 
Um, <laughs> still got to watch that, but uh, yeah. still got to watch that. Yeah. Uh, you've also got Marsha Gay Harden. You've got Al Pacino uh, in supporting roles with him. Wow. Um, it's an amazing cast for this sort of thing. But oh. Michael Keaton is the star of this thing and, and just does all the heavy lifting. He directed it. And uh, so um, oh. it is it is his. All things are coming up, Michael Keaton. Yeah, they really are. Yeah, Beetlejuice and yeah, all that. yeah he's, gotta love uh, that dude. He's amazing. He's he's just fantastic, and he's so good in this. Um, uh, and James Marsden, surprising, like not surprisingly good, but a surprising side of James Marsden that you haven't seen before. Oh, or at least that I haven't seen before. Yeah, you typically um, it's it's not like it's all romantic comedies, but he's not known for super serious. Roles. Super exactly yeah. in a frenetic drama and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um uh it's great. It's um it's very good. It's on uh HBO Max and it is uh um absolutely worth your time. And and I know that that clip sounded depressing. There's there's a lot of uplifting and, and boy, there's a lot of action and excitement in this film too, because he's a uh um a hitman, but um it's it's really, really good. Don't let that little clip uh, that little bum side me out. Will bum me out exactly. Yeah, I want to. Eh, the reviews are pretty good. I guess uh, yeah, there's some dissent on the critic side. You're there's right. Audiences love it though. Side, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big audience, high audience score, and then the critics are like mixed on it. And I think uh, you know Tina obviously has to deal with a lot of people with um, forms of Alzheimer's and dementia and stuff like that. And she said that the representation was very, very accurate by mm. uh, Keaton in this. Oh, that's good. There's I didn't know they added this. I just noticed this on Rotten Tomatoes. They have a verified audience category. That oh, really? seems like so a you prove you watched it. Be, so you're not just review bombing. Well, something? I think you prove that you are who you say you are. Like you have it's a real name kind of deal. You're not hiding behind some fake. I don't know how it works actually, but that's interesting a way to, to try to improve your audience scores. I like that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and where I'm sorry, you said where this was streaming yep, on I, uh, on Max. Yeah, HBO Max. All right, there you go. You guys check it out. Hey, Nicole, mm-hmm. let's throw it over to you and find out what you watched. I know what you watched, and I'm very I'm, excited I'm to hear watching, your take. Oh, it's, you're still, watching. It's, still, it's one of those uh, shows that uh, they have those weekly releases, like a blame. Gotcha. <laughs> 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 like, they're, like they've forgotten what the 2020s are for. Well, sure. What year is this? <laughs> Some people prefer so. this stuff. I don't know why they do. I like it all at once, personally, but. I like yeah, it I do too. Yeah. yeah, I feel but, like there's there's always an argument for the other way, but I've yet to be convinced by it. So you whatever. know what I heard? I and I I don't know if this is true, but I heard that the way that Netflix decides to renew a series is if they they don't necessarily look at how much has been watched; they look at how much it's been finished. Oh, interesting. So, like, oh. did you get to the end of it? How many people got to the end of the season? Hmm. If that's the case, that, then that's that's a pretty good metric, especially if you're dropping yeah. all at once, right? If you got twelve yeah, episodes, right. and if you're not finishing because the show, if you're not finishing it, how many people are actually going to want to watch season two? Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. interesting. So. All right. Well, uh, let's play your clip. And uh, do you want anything you want to say about a setup or anything here? Um, I was very excited to see this trailer, and I had been waiting for it uh, after. Um, watching it I, I don't know i think it came up on facebook mm. uh has of some of my favorite people actors in it uh my kids are watching it with me um we'll talk why mark is not watching it with me <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh i have a feeling it might be one of the concerns i have because he and i are of a similar yeah, age we have a similar but, feeling about that movie the the, the source yeah. material so yeah so uh I will say I think this might be a series that might for some people they won't get to the end of it. <laughs> so, mm, but, but we okay. will. But we will. We're loving it. I'm going to recommend it. All so right, here we is. go. Check it out. You're going to have to be on your own now because we are a crack team of expert thieves. And we move fast, so we can't let some book reader slow us down. Let's spread out see if we can't find something to steal. <gasps> what? What is it? Is it valuable? Priceless. Under under construction. Right. Okay. So, uh, how do we get out of here? This is the weirdest episode of Friends I ever heard. <laughs> and you just hit on the the point where Mark's like, 
I can't. So that was Lisa Kudrow. If you didn't <laughs> yeah. recognize her voice, this yeah. is Time Bandits. Yeah. Um, and he's like, it's just pulling me out. I can't. But here's the funny thing. My kids have never seen Friends. Yeah. And they oh, are really? so, absolutely loving this. So it's not the nostalgia aspect that is bothering Mark. It's Lisa Kudrow, and he can't he can't not see Phoebe Buffay uh, going yes. through the going through time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, so, that was my um, issue with it. Not that I haven't I haven't seen it yet, and I plan to see it. But I'm nervous about it because I I hold the original mm-hmm. Time Bandits in some very special light. I love here. it. Yeah. Yeah. So for so, me, it's like, so, but I like Lisa Kudrow a lot. I think she's underused in the world, so that doesn't bother me. I'm excited to see her in it. So the whole premise is you have this group of time bandits. Uh, and when when did the original movie come out? 81? And it was a Monty Python. Yeah, was 80. it Monty Python? No, that it was, funded that. No, it was, well, it was directed by Terry Gilliam, and there were people from Monty Python in it, mm-hmm. but it wasn't. Mm-hmm. It was just him directing a movie, right? But it mm-hmm. felt Monty. I mean, it feels Monty Python. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's very British. It's very Police 70s. And uh, uh, Michael Palin was in there. And yeah. Yes, maybe regulars, and but I think that was so it. So, this is, uh, and I'm going to butcher his name because I always, somebody told me Mike Tyke Watiti. Taika Watiti. Right? Taika. Taika Watiti. Yeah. yeah. Taika Watiti. <laughs> I've been practicing. That's very uh, good. Very good. <laughs> he, uh, he rebooted this. And well, not rebooted it. It's almost like an like a continuation. Uh, you got Jermaine Clement as the evil, um, and they steal a map. So the time bandits steal a map. The kid. I think the reason why m- my kids are into it is because the main character is a little kid who is a history buff. He's a nerd, yeah. and he doesn't fit in. And my kids don't really feel like they fit in. Mm. And so it's just kind of been neat to watch this show through their eyes. Mm. Um, and it and it's it's a way to expose them to history without having to like sit down and read this history book, kid. So so what you heard in the clip was, you know, they're learning about Stonehenge and it's and there's a comedy relief to it all mm-hmm. so um <laughs> the kid finally gets to ask who built stonehenge all these questions and it's it's pretty funny yeah. so that sounds like it's cool. i mean pretty true to the source that's one of the great things yeah. about that i think a lot of people and a lot of the like customer review or viewer reviews on imdb and in other places are negative and if you go read them they're almost all just complaining that this isn't like the thing I saw when I was a kid. Mm, it's sure, not meant to be. Sure. I don't think. I don't think so either. And I think it's, yeah. I understand it. Like I understand that feeling, especially based on what I was just saying. And Brian agreed that it's like this movie you hold in a certain regard. And so you're just nervous that somehow they're going to ruin it. But here's the truth of it. I always have to remind myself that movie will always exist in the form it exists. Mm-hmm. And this will be a thing that exists in the form it exists. And it doesn't mean you have to like both of them, but it's okay that they do this. It doesn't, it's not a big deal. There's no personal vendetta here to screw you with your childhood. You either like it or you don't. And the only big difference I can see here anyway when I look at it is, all right, adher- adherence to some humor. The kid's a nerd. So it's like the old movie. Um, yeah. It's quirky and strange. The only big difference here is this isn't full of little people as the actors. Right. And I think right, some people think that's like I, key to the experience, and I don't agree. I don't think it matters. But here's the thing. So not all the episodes are out. I think the little people, the original little people, are going to show back up. Oh, you do? In oh, what? Really? I, I think it's a, it's a continuation. I don't think it's a reboot. I think it's like hmm. integrate the, the, the previous movie into it somehow. Well, is it a – But I don't okay. – It's not a prequel, is it? Because – I no, think because that kid, that cool. kid's name is Kevin in the old one too. Is um, it? Yeah. By the way, that actor that plays Kevin, I love this kid because his parents <laughs> named him after Superman. <laughs> no kidding. He's Call L Tuck. Call L Tuck. Can you imagine? That's great. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to see this regardless. I just, to, yeah, I'm kind of waiting for it all fun. to come out. Yeah. Don't try to compare it. Enjoy the ride. It there's only mm-hmm. four episodes I think out right now. Um. They come out on Wednesday, so two more come should come out today. Today, yeah, yeah, uh, and then so, uh, yeah, it looks like so they you said they're releasing two. You say every every yeah. Wednesday, and then the last yeah. two will be on uh, the twenty first. Yep, is that new but, for Netflix? Like the, is that is that something they just started doing, or they've been doing this for a while? This is uh, Apple TV Plus. Yeah, it's Apple TV. Yep. Oh, sorry, I thought it was Netflix but this it, whole time. But also, it's new for them to do a 
two a week kind of thing. I've I haven't seen them do that before. I don't think. Yeah, I know they've done like here's the first two. It's more of a Disney thing, though. Right, right. Okay. Where they yeah exactly give you a few at the beginning, but then it's week to week by then. But I don't. Gotcha. Maybe they and did that with um, our flag means death or or something like that. And I just didn't notice. I don't something. remember either. Um, but I love everybody involved. So you know, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. I like it. I'm just happy to have a show that I can watch with my kids. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it's nice, right? And it's it's something you know, and it's not a cartoon. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, hey, <laughs> let's watch Time Bandits. All right. And we've, I will say, they've been putting it on, and they've already seen the episode, so it actually has some good like rewatchability yeah. for them too. Yeah. So it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I would I would I'm just browsing more IMDb reviews. They're all. It, none of it has to do with the content of the show. It's all about quit taking my childhood memories and mm. changing them. Yeah. Ugh. Most of these people aren't even watching it. So F yeah. that. F that noise. Yeah. Fill yes. grow buttholes. All right. Uh, Time Band. It's on, uh, sorry, Apple TV and uh, available in almost its entirety, uh, but on Soon. Soon. In a couple weeks. Uh, all right. I was over on Max. And I watched a thing, a movie <clears throat> that has been on my list for years and years and years. And I don't know what took me so long, but it's one of um, one of these movies where you're just like, I've, I finally need to see this. It's one of Philip Seymour Hoffman's last films. It was released the year he died. And uh, there's uh, a lot to like about it. So here's your clip. Hello. That scrawny bastard. They call him the Admiral. He's drinking at Zilberzak Bar. I think you know the place. Better than I should Why make a four-hour layover in Cyprus on your way back from Dubai to Frankfurt? You can fly direct. I don't know, Gunter. Air miles? Yeah, with my luck, that's probably all it is. Uh, seven friends. Is that all you have, Gunter? Oh, I wish. All right. It's sort of a clip decided on because I didn't want to spoil much about the story, but... Uh, that is Philip, Philip Seymour Hoffman playing the character Gunther Bachman. And uh, you might say to yourself, wait a minute, is he doing a German accent? You'd be correct. Um, <laughs> he is. <laughs> yeah, there's another, there's a few yeah, weird ones like that. Uh, he does a, a, an accent like that. Rachel McAdams is in this and does a German mm -hmm. accent. I don't know why they didn't just hire German actors to do it. Um, the movie is not in German. It's all in English. But I still think you could have hired some German actors. I don't know why they didn't. That's weird to me. Uh, that being said, though, these are really great actors. Uh, and they're playing Germans, and it's fine. And it's this whole story is wrapped up in this idea that there's a, this, is, this is just post 9-11, and parts of Europe are having more terrorist threats than ever, and there's a special... Um, designated uh, agency in Germany. I forgot the name of the agency, but the Philip Seymour Hoffman's character is in charge of it. It's all off the books. Nobody really knows about it. And it's a counterterrorism unit. And it's very like Tinker, Taylor, t t Tuber style. Oh, yeah. Tink yeah. Soldier Spy. <laughs> Soldier, Soldier, Spy. Soldier Spy. I never remember the, all Tuber. the words. Tuber. Yeah. Tuber. The potatoes. Yeah. And, uh -huh. The whole potato scene is really good. Um, but it's like that. It's this level of. Uh, espionage sort of spy movie and um boy it ends it ends in a way that is unexpected and hmm. completely out of the out of this world as far as i'm concerned like i didn't see it coming wow. i respect also I respect a movie this doesn't spoil anything but i respect a movie that leaves me going well shit that did not work out like it like most movies want to have give you a little happy feely and have and they Harrison still wrap everything up in a bow and all that. Yeah, yeah, they don't do that here. They they leave you going, damn it, dude. And I, it's the point of it is to say this kind of work leads to these sorts of ends, and it's not great, and yet you still have to do it anyway. He plays this really disheveled, kind of cranky head of this thing, but he's got his he's he's basically got all the right intentions. He's, he's trying to do good in the world. Same with Rachel McAdams character. Robin Wright plays a, an American diplomat. Um, that's all I'll say there. Cause good Lord, that goes places, uh, is good. It's real good. It's available on max. And as usual, Hoffman puts in an incredible performance that's worth seeing on its own. And, uh, I think people will like it. Uh, so go check it out. A most wanted man is the name of the movie and it's available on Very max. Good. All righty, we did it. These are all going to be up on quicktms.li, which is, of course, linked on our website as well. And uh, already. 
already up there to ready to go. Nicole, anything? I felt like going? this was a fa- it was a fast episode well, without we, Randy. You got no Randy. <laughs> You know, when you got four, four makes a difference. Three feels small, That's four feels big. That's right. Yeah. Uh, anything going on with the Wood Whisperer or anything you want to mention? Yeah. Today? Um, Mark just uh, announced a new guild course that's coming out. He made Ava a really nice vanity. It's, oh. And so. Um, I want to see that. Is we, it up on the yeah. channel? Is it up on the channel right now? He put it. He, no. It, so. We have free videos on the main site, and then we have full-blown woodworking classes where he teaches you step-by-step how to build a thing mm. in what we call our guild. So uh, the woodwhisperguild.com is where you can find the, the vanity. Very nice. Ooh, he's yeah. awesome. Oh, but, I, but I do see Oreo hanging out on a uh, mortising oh, yeah. jig. Yes. Yeah, he just released a mortising <laughs> jig. I swear that cat is the weirdest cat I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's like the a dog. Best cat you ever had. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Except so. that it lost his uh, video collar, right? Uh, yes, he did lose his video collar. I I did get a replacement for it, but I've been really hesitant to send him out with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a pain. Sure. Uh, well, all right then, go check it out. Wood Whisper on YouTube, and of course uh, yep. that guild information on their website. Nicole, have a fantastic day. Bye. We'll Bye. See you next time. Bye. Okay, I can, okay, I can tell you my my next week recommendals is probably going to be uh, Alien, uh, Prometheus, and Covenant because I'm getting ready for that movie next week, and so I want to watch the two the two uh, most recent but prequels. <laughs> I probably won't watch the first Alien though beforehand, even though the Romulus takes place between Alien and Aliens. Yeah. Oh, is that the time frame? I wasn't actually sure about. Yeah. That. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, pretty stoked too. I'm gonna. This is oh my next my theater movie as well. Kim and I are gonna go. So, yeah, stoked. Just yeah, a matter of which theater I'm gonna choose. I want something big and loud. You know, for sure. Yeah. So I wonder if there's gonna be. A, is there gonna be an alien popcorn bucket that everybody wants to get with after uh, the movie? I don't. I, if they do, <laughs> man, we've gone too far. If they do, we've really gone too far as a society. When all we're thinking about is, what's the next popcorn bucket gonna be? I mean, if it's alien, oh, it's, it's an, egg, an egg, right? It's absolutely gonna be an egg. Yeah, yeah. with the egg and they have the flaps out. I would assume. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would. I would consider that. That would be actually. Cool. I would too. Yeah, actually, that would be a cool large scale three D print. One of those eggs. It really would. Yeah, I and just think, have uh, like one leg coming out of the, the face crabs, just like starting to creep out of there. Oh, yeah. It's funny. The uh, the photos I'm seeing are um, are just uh, xenomorph heads. Boring. I'm not seeing any boring any eggs it is lame yeah, yeah. maybe i just need to make one and take my own there and say put my popcorn in this yeah they're smoking crack if they think that's as cool as an egg it's not mm, it's not uh we're done with the show though however quick note about tomorrow so a little bit different uh, brian's gonna be helping his mom out tomorrow and that means that we yeah. will not see him till roughly around 10 we're still gonna do a show we'll do an hour mm-hmm. but it will be later and it may fluctuate a little if it's a little later than 10 we'll keep you aware yeah. and we'll have a scheduled live link up but there will be a show tomorrow it'll be shorter and it will start later 10 p.m mountain time an hour later than usual or so so just keep an eye on me and brian and we'll keep you updated on the discord and our socials and stuff like that uh, as to that should be good though but no windy so don't get excited about having your problems all fixed okay yeah sorry sorry yeah you have to wait for another week uh, all right, that's it. Frogpants.com slash TMS for all things you need. Brian, let's play a song. They need that. They need that, and I'm happy to provide it. Matt, uh, a.k.a. Scottis X, wrote in and said, Hey, Spike and Boom Boom, I turned the not-so-special number uh, at all age of 43 this year on August 1st, and I just wanted to insert a song into the queue for the heck of it. I, I thought Lonely Rolling Star from Katamari Damacy uh, play retro at episode when he says by the eight bit big band could be a fun jaunty whatever but if that doesn't work I'm always down for anything by Dan Avidan of course Scary Pockets or the Proto Men thank y'all for the song and for testing the ship's phasers by destroying them with lasers sign Matt Scottis X happy forty third with uh, let's give her the phasers where is that let's test the ship's phasers there you go dude congratulations you know what forty three is a good year for me so I hope you have a great forty third it's a good it's yeah. a good time to be alive sure. 
Oh, seems so long ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, eight big big band, eight bit big band. I'll say it slowly and carefully so that I don't mush all the letters together. Came out with an album in 2018 called Press Start. On there, you'll find this cover of Lonely Rolling Star from Katamari Damazi. Um, it's great. This uh, this is this is you know you hear eight bit and you're like oh it's going to be a chip tune. No, it's not. It's a big band um, that that does a lot of. Uh, um, video game covers. Here you go again, the 8-Bit Big Band and Lonely Rolling Star. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Yes. Get more at frogpants.com Poopy Doodles. Poopy Doodles. <laughs> you know, poopy, poop, doodles. poopy Doodles. Poopy Doodles. 